Good morning. It is Friday. You can tell because clothing, dress down day. The one day of the week I don't have to wear a bloody collared shirt and trousers and all that uniformist crap that we have to deal with all week. Anyway, D&D. &D. Something which is definitely not uniformist or crap. Today, I was thinking about what to talk about, and I've actually decided I'm going to talk about something that's not actually directly D&D &D today. I'm going to talk about something that has D&D &D as part of it, and which has influenced D&D &D for a lot of people but doesn't actually involve your game, except in a comparison. My topic for today is Critical Role. Now, I'm sure nearly anyone who's gotten around to watching my little channel here has probably already heard of Critical Role. And everyone probably already has an opinion on it. But today, Having played the game for quite a while, I thought, why not give mine? Now, for those of you who, for whatever reason, aren't aware, Critical Role, uh, DM'd by Matt Mercer, is a D&D &D game run every week on a Thursday night. They usually go about four hours a session. Uh, and the sessions are streamed over uh, Twitch and Alpha. And they've been going for about, well, they're just coming up on 100 episodes, actually. And they have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of subscribers. And a lot of people credit Matt Mercer with fundamentally changing the way most people view D&D. That could possibly be true, and bear in mind I am a huge fan of Critical Role, but I'm also not always sure that that's a good thing. Sorry about that, I did decline a call. Um, yeah, I'm not always sure that's a good thing. Because Matt Mercer's group is far from any D&D group that we're going to be a member of. It's, it is an exceptional circumstance in nearly every way. In the case of Critical Role, you had a group of trained voice actors people who are used to stepping into other characters, people who it is their job to walk into a studio and be someone else. Okay, that cannot be overlooked. Yeah, they have a script or yeah, they have guidance or whatever, but it is their job to make a character which is not them believable. That training is something that none of us, or at least very few of us, will ever have. And take that the next step further, they were then a group of friends before D&D. &D. Uh, I don't think all of them knew each other specifically, but all of them had friends within the group. That's how they got together. And that, again, is not the same for a lot of us. A lot of us are drawn to the people in our group because of a mutual love for D&D &D that already exists. These people were friends pre-D&D. &D. Again, that's important. The next thing is, then, that a lot of them had never played D&D &D before. 
and those that had, for the most part, had not played for years. This means that they were coming into things with a very different mindset, again, than most of us. Unless you are brand new to D&D, in which case, then you will share that mindset. But for a lot of us, it's so hard to remember when D&D was new. I'll, I'll say things sometimes to my, my gaming group, and I, I think I just confuse people because I forget that there are people playing D&D that don't know what Thaco is. You know, it just... It, I forget that there are people who 5th edition is the first D&D they ever played. I can't remember what it was like when D&D was new. It was just too long ago, too many games back. So, you have these three conditions, trained voice actors, friends before the game, coming into the game fresh. That was the conditions for starting their home game. And bear in mind, Critical Role was a home game before it was a Twitch stream. I think they've been playing for nearly a year before they started streaming. Now, what that means is that they were automatically predisposed to a heavily storyline-driven, character-driven game with heavy roleplay elements. That is a very specific kind of game that, if you tried it in most of your groups, would probably fail. Because most of, most groups, mine included, don't have the deep emotional connections out of character needed to express deep emotional connections in character. It just... There has to be something to play off of. Remember, when you're role-playing, the hardest thing in the world to do is to role-play someone who is nothing like you. Take an aspect of yourself and magnify it a thousand times. You can do that. Because even if the element is a small part of you, it is part of you. And that means that you understand you understand even if you don't give in to that drive, you do feel it. So then you can say, okay, well, if I did give in to it, this is what I would do. That's what your character can do. So, these people already have emotional connections. They are friends. A few of them are couples with people on the show. And that means that they understand those connections with each other. <coughs> and those connections then can sometimes even be switched around. Um, I'm getting to the point that there are probably going to be some spoilers if you've not watched Critical Role. So, if you haven't watched it, probably log out here, go watch it, and I'll see you in a few months. Because, um, you know... 100 shows, 4 hours, yeah. Um, but if you look at the relationship between Vax and Keyleth, they roleplay this very kind of sweet relationship, which you don't often see in D&D. But... A lot of it comes from the fact that Marisha, who plays Keyleth at least, can draw on 
her relationship with Matt. And Keyleth, I, I do genuinely believe, is an extension of Marisha in a lot of ways. Probably more so than some of the other characters. Um, definitely more naive. Definitely more foolhardy. But I definitely think she plays on elements of herself very strongly. And in an amazing way. And so especially from her side of that, she has that relationship there to draw on. And Liam, who plays Vax, has observations between Marisha and Matt because he knows them well to draw on to play off of what Tequilith is doing. So their out-of-character relationships are maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously informing in-character behaviors. And that only comes with people who know each other outside of D&D. And not many of us really have that anymore. The gaming group that I had as a much younger person, 16 to 25, was like that for a while. We did get to that point. But that was because we spent, well, 16 to 25. And we spent five or six nights a week together. Not to mention all day Saturday and most Sundays. And it wasn't all D&D. We went out to eat. We went to the bars. We went to the strip clubs. We went to concerts. We went on road trips. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes, even when we were doing other things, it would devolve into D&D. We're sat at the dinner table at some restaurant and someone starts asking about something that their character's been looking into in-game. At least one of us always had a, a, a set of dice in their pocket. Roll a couple of dice. And, you know, the IHOP turns into the D&D &D session. It happened more often than you'd believe. Or, we're on a road trip. We're driving somewhere. What do you do while you're driving? Well, you clear out the console in the center of the car. You roll your dice into it. Make sure the passenger does this, not the driver. And you play some D&D &D while you drive. Probably where I originally thought of this and then just didn't do anything with it for years. Um, so yeah, you can get a group that eventually gets those connections. It takes time. Most of us don't have that. The thing to remember is that Critical Role... While it is amazing, is not a benchmark for what your game needs to be like. You don't have to completely fall into your characters the way they do, and and act them out, and, and speak in other voices, and they're trained to do that. That's their job. You don't have to do that for D&D to work. Does it add something to it? Possibly. In some cases, I think it does. In other cases, I think it's a distraction. Again, it depends on how it's used. It depends on the group it's in. Um, do you have to have deep emotional connections with the other members of your party? in every game you play. No. Yeah, they can help to run a certain amount of storyline. But I've run games where players abs... Well, well, characters, not players. Where characters 
absolutely can't stand each other. And yet, the game has worked. Because they've had a common drive. It's all down to the style of play. And that's down to the DM knowing the group. So, there we have it. Yes, Critical Role has certainly changed the way most of us view D&D. It has reminded me, as a long-time player, of the camaraderie that existed in, in groups of the past, which I'm hoping I will one day have with the current group that I'm in, but we're not there yet. It reminds me of all of the amazing things that mean that D&D is so different for everyone. You know, they're using D&D to work through real life issues. And most people watching it probably never even realize it. And yet it's therapeutic because when you do realize why the in-character stories matter, when you realize they are a reflection of out-of-character events and friendships, when you realize that they're not just an assembled cast like so many of the other online shows that I won't mention are, when you see the old home phone videos that have been posted on YouTube of their old home game, and you see them sitting around a table acting like idiots, and you look at it and you go, now that's what my group looks like. And you realize that they are what they are because of a specific set of circumstances, but there are elements of that game that can apply to all of us. Now, I've actually talked all the way to work for the first time. I set out a bit early because we had a release last night and um, there was less traffic, so here we are. I definitely have to sign off now because now it's actually time to go do some work. Have a great day. I'll put a link to Critical Role at the end today. Check it out if you haven't. If you have, check it out again. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for another game recap.